Throughout this EVNG playlist, we've talked a lot about how to connect EVNG to a bunch of different types of devices, maybe devices within EVNG, maybe devices running from one topology to another topology, or even how to connect EVNG nodes to other VMs running on the same host. But now we need to take it a step further because there are still some devices that no matter how hard you try, you simply can't emulate them. I'm talking voice over IP phones as well as wireless access points. So by the end of this video, you'll understand how we can create a hosted ESXi environment where EVNG nodes can communicate securely to other physical appliances within our network like voice over IP phones and wireless access points. Let's get going. All right, y'all don't make fun of me because of how messy this is. We're trying to set up the, the twins' new bedroom, so this is where I just had to shove my lab for the time being. So here we go. I've got this wireless access point just sitting on the floor. It actually goes into a PoE injector right here, and then from there, the black cable goes right there into port 23. You can see it's amber right now on the switch. And then right here, this is EVNG. So what I want to do is I'm going to take this, this third NIC right here, I'm gonna plug this in. And I gotta undo these twist ties. Hang on one second. I got the twist ties undone. So there we go. We can see I've got the third nick now plugged in here and I'm gonna plug it in to port 21 on the switch. So I've got port 21 is going to be one of the EVNG clouds and port 23 is what leads into the PoE injector, which leads into this AP, which is blinking at me right now, trying to come to life. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna try and get EVNG talking to this AP over one of the clouds that we talked about in a previous video. This can be a bit of a complicated setup to understand fundamentally and logically. So let's kind of talk about what it is that we're trying to do in this video. Here, I have my physical server. And again, we've got my three NICs. Oop, let me kind of stop doing, there we go. There's my three NICs that we've got here. Then I had my physical switch sitting above it, and all the way over here we had ports 23, I'm going to write it like this, and we had ports 21. Beyond that, I also had my wireless access point, I'm going to kind of draw it like this so it looks like this. We connected the third port here into port 21, and we connected the wireless access point, of course through a PoE injector, into port 23. Beyond that, we got to think about how VMware works. VMware is going to create, we need to create a new isolated way, that way even G nodes can communicate into VMware, out this NIC, and then into these two ports where they can communicate. So here we're going to need to create a VLAN that isolates these two ports together. Let's just call this something like, I don't know, VLAN 28, just to make something up. And it'll be the 172.28.0.0 slash 24 network. Beyond that, on this switch, I'm going to create an interface for VLAN 28 so that we can run a DHCP pool for VLAN 28. Now, recalling a previous video, we have a default V switch in VMware that binds itself to this NIC, and that's how these devices communicate out to the outbound internet. But now what I want to do is I want to create a new V switch that binds itself to this NIC right here, the third NIC, and it will be able to serve a port group for VLAN 28. So we're going to have two V switches, one that's going to be for our physical internet and one that's going to be also for a physical network, but it's going to be isolated by VLAN 28. And that's how my nodes will be able to communicate into VLAN 28. We'll be able to use a cloud just like we've done in previous videos by attaching the EVM into this physical V switch. So there is a lot going on here and that's what we're going to cover in this video. Let's get going with it. All right, first things first, I am on the physical switch here. If I give it a show IP interface brief, I should see that sure enough, ports 23 is up. That was going to be my AP and 21 is up and that's going to be my server. So let's go into interface, get, let's actually, no, let's do this first. Let's create VLAN. What did I say it was going to be 28? There we go. And I'll give it the name Wi-Fi, something like that. Now I'll go into interface VLAN 28 and I'll create the... IP address for 172.28.0.0, 255, 255, 255.0. Oh, of course, this does need to be an actual IP address and not a subnet, right? I'm already thinking about the DHCP pool. Let's exit out and let's create the DHCP pool for that subnet. IP DHCP pool, let's call it Wi-Fi. It's going to be for network 172.28.0.0, 255, 255, 255.0. Let's say default router is going to be this device, 172.28.0.1. And DNS, let's just hand out 8888, something simple like that. 
Now, of course, we need to exclude the address with IP DHCP excluded address. Let's remove 120.0.1 so that way it doesn't hand out the router's address as part of the DHCP pool. Now we need to actually assign interfaces into VLAN 28. And we know that's going to be interface 21 and interface 23. So I'll say interface gig 1 slash 0. Actually, you know what? Let's just do this in one fail swoop. Interface range gig 1 slash 0 slash 21, comma, 1 slash, oop, 1 slash 0 slash 23. Oh, it's got to be gig, doesn't it? There we go. And we'll say switch port access VLAN 28. And make sure it's on switch port mode access as well. But as I'm typing this, I realize, wait a minute, that's not how VMware works. These V switches, when they attach to a NIC, they're sending a trunk out, outbound, even if there's only one port group attached to it. So what we need to do is we need to actually tag this traffic as it's coming in through the NIC and into the switch. Now we plug the server into port 21. So port 21 actually needs to be a trunk. Let's change interface gig 1 slash 0 slash 21. And we'll change this to switch port mode trunk. And just for fun, I'll say no switch port access VLAN 28. So if I say do show run interface gig 1021, we see it's just switch port mode trunk. And if I check out 23, we've got it set to VLAN 28. So as traffic comes out of the vSwitch and out of the server into the physical switch, it's going to be tagged with VLAN 28. Then, of course, as it arrives on the switch, that tag will be removed and it will be sent out to the rest of VLAN 28. In this case, it'll be a wireless access point. So now let's exit out of this switch that we've been configuring and we'll start setting up the ESXi server to handle VLAN 28 and attach to the correct NIC. So here we go, I've got ESXi brought up here, and if I jump into the networking section, I see that I've got a bunch of different port groups, but if I look at my virtual switches, I've really only got two virtual switches here, one that's for my main network, and one that I specifically created for my DNA center. Now this one is attached to my first physical NIC, and this one is attached to my second physical NIC. But if I look under physical NICs, I see that I've actually got a bunch of physical NICs here. I've got four, and those are these BNX3s that we see here. And in fact, one of these BNX3s, this VNIC2, we see that it's actually showing an up status. That's because we did plug it in. Beyond that, I can even take a look at the MAC address, seeing that it ends with E48C. So that if I need to use this MAC address for any troubleshooting later, I can see, oh, this is the MAC address that I'm specifically looking for, this one that ends with E48C. So let's start creating our physical Virt or let's start creating our virtual switch that's going to bind itself to that physical NIC and then we'll create the VLAN on that virtual switch. So I'm going to choose add a standard virtual switch. We'll call this Wi-Fi V switch, something simple like that. I'll leave the basic settings here the same. I am going to accept promiscuous mode because that's how this traffic is going to work. In fact, I'm just going to accept all of these things here because that's kind of the entire point when it comes to EVNG and virtualization. We're going to be sending in multiple MAC addresses on the same NIC coming into this virtual switch. So my uplink here is bound to that VM NIC too. If I had plugged in the other VM NIC, I could add a second uplink here and do some load balancing, but this is fine. This is binding. VM NIC 2 is the third physical NIC on my particular server. So I'll click add, and now I have my Wi-Fi vSwitch. Now all I have to do is create VLAN 28, which is a port group on that vSwitch. So I'll say add port group. I'll call this Wi-Fi one more time. The VLAN ID is 28, and the virtual switch that this needs to be in is my Wi-Fi vSwitch. If I expand security here, we can see it's going to inherit the settings from my vSwitch. Doesn't hurt to go ahead and just set these explicitly to accept as well. So I'll click Add, and now my ESXi host is now bridged out to that physical server, which is now going out up a trunk port into that particular physical switch. All I have to do now is add a physical NIC into EVNG that connects itself to that port group. So on my EVNG VM, I'm going to choose edit here, add a network adapter. And if I scroll down, I see it's added the third network adapter right here. And I'm going to choose to connect this to the Wi-Fi port group. So at this point, consider this is how it's going to work. Here's my EVE VM. It's got a NIC here that goes out to the internet. It's got a NIC here that I used in my previous video where I connected EVE VMs to other VMs on the ESXi host. Now I've just added this third NIC here, which goes into my new vSwitch. It belongs to the port group, which has VLAN 28 on it. That vSwitch is connected to the third physical NIC on my server. So I'll just draw two others here so that you can see that it's clearly the third. 
This third physical NIC on my server is a .1Q trunk that goes into port 21 on my physical switch. And now because the traffic was tagged with VLAN 28 up here, this can communicate to VLAN 28 traffic anywhere in my physical network, which is where my Wi-Fi adapter is. So now within EVE, I could spin up things like a virtual wireless LAN controller that can communicate all the way down to my wireless devices. I'll click save here. And just for good measure, I am rebooting my EVE virtual machine. So let me get signed in here. We can even say it tells me to keep using the same IP address that we've been using. That's a good sign too. All right, after the machine has rebooted, I am getting signed in to my EVE NG lab. And as we can see here, I've got some devices with some networks that I'm playing with in the background. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna add a new network into the mix here. This is gonna go back to those cloud networks that we talked about in a previous video and understanding how they bind to different networks. Now, before we had Cloud Zero, which goes out to my management network by default, that's the default NIC. Then we had Cloud One. That was the second NIC in ESXi that EVE NG is bound to. So here is cloud zero, here is cloud one, so this will be cloud two. So if I jump back to my EVE NG topology, I'm gonna choose cloud two, I'm gonna call this the Wi-Fi cloud, and I'm gonna change the symbol here to actually be a cloud, and I'll click save. And now, just for good measure, I'm gonna add a node, something like a Cisco wireless LAN controller. So I'll click save here to add the wireless LAN controller onto the topology. I'll drag it onto the Wi-Fi cloud and click save, and then I'll give it a start. Let me bring up the console of the wireless LAN controller here and we'll watch it come to life. In fact, while this is coming to life, a good idea would also be to grab a new little Docker container so that we can manage our wireless LAN controller from a front end. So let's use the GUI server, or we could use Firefox, doesn't really matter. I'm gonna use the GUI server just for good measure. And I'm gonna enable DHCP on Ethernet zero. That way it grabs an IP address from that DHCP pool that we created on the actual switch itself. I'll click save to this and I'll drag this onto the Wi-Fi network as well and click save. I'll also boot that container up. So we'll continue to wait as these devices come to life here. Let's actually terminate auto install. We'll say yes, terminate auto install. Interestingly, something I forgot about these wireless LAN controllers, look at this, they run a DHCP pool by default. So that's something that is an issue that you might run into when you start your wireless LAN controller for the first time if you want to use a different subnet other than 192.168.1 and you've already created a DHCP pool somewhere else. Now you have two DHCP servers on the same subnet. That's something we'll have to fix. So here I've brought the GUI server to life. Let's bring up the system tools and the terminal real quick and I'll give it an IP ADDR. And I see right here, it did in fact get an IP address on the correct pool. So at this point, if I jump back onto my physical router and do a show MAC address table, let's see what we got going on here. Under VLAN 28, look at this. Now I see a bunch of different hosts. And in fact, I see two hosts coming in over the trunk port for VLAN 28. This is going to be my wireless LAN controller as well as the physical GUI server. Let's check out show IP ARP one second. And interestingly, I see 172.28.16, which I assume is going to be one of my virtual devices because the MAC address right here lines up right here on gig 1021. In fact, I verify that right here. Yep, here it is on my GUI server 172.28.16. Let's see if the wireless shows up and show CDP neighbors. Sure enough, it does right there. There's my wireless device on gig 1023. Let's say show CDP neighbors details and I see its IP address right here, 172.28.0.21. So if all works, that means my nodes that are running in EVNG can ping my nodes that are physically existing like my wireless access devices. There we go. We have round trip traffic from my EVNG nodes all the way out to my physical network where my wireless access points are. So this node, which is running in EVNG, has the IP address 172.28.0.16. It communicates out the third NIC of my EVE VM into the new vSwitch that we just created, bound to the third NIC of my physical server, trunked into the physical switch, and then from there out to the wireless access point. Quite a journey, right? But this is how we can get EVNG now communicating to devices like our wireless access points or like our phone devices.
which is really cool stuff if you need to start labbing things like how wireless works or how telecommunications work. So that's been how to get EVNG talking to your physical network where you can have an isolated VLAN just for devices like wireless access points or for communication devices like voice over IP phones. Thanks for stopping by, y'all. I'll see you in the next one.